Okay, well, uh, we're Millie and Katie, or Millie, with Matt. <laughs> we heard about you from Jude. Yeah. My nephew. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so the first question is, um, obviously we heard about you from Jude and he mentioned a few things. Like uh, you be you worked up from being a cleaner or like a runner. I was yeah, I was a runner. Right, okay. I was a cleaner. Uh, yeah, I, I did a very different jobs prior to working in TV. But when I was about twenty five, I went on a TV show. I applied to reply to an advert in a newspaper uh, for contestants for a TV show, and I went on that TV show and I thought, wow, this is an amazing job. I can't believe these people are being paid to do this job. Um, and I won about three grand on it. So I decided to go on holiday with my girlfriend at the time. And whilst there, I thought, I don't want to be doing the job I want, I'm doing, which was fundraising. I'd love to work in TV. So I started my career again at the age of 25, 26. So I became a runner and then worked my way up. Yeah. yeah so it was very much a surprise how everything came yeah. across. I've always been obsessed with television. I always watched and consumed ridiculous amounts of television but I didn't assume it was a profession that I would be able to get into um I don't know why that is looking back you know there is slightly a snobbery about certain you know getting into television it's quite hard if you're um from a certain social background but um no I didn't have any aspirations at that point and it wasn't until going on onto a um tv show and seeing that there were people that were like me working in that industry that I thought well okay well if they can do it I can do it. I know that when I've done my research on like television um, they're saying they're trying to be more inclusive of the classes that work in them. Um, would you say that's quite true now? Yeah weirdly I was just reading this morning on on broadcast magazine online that Alex Mahon uh, who's the chief executive of Channel 4 they've just published a survey about it and apparently people from lower social backgrounds don't last in TV as long as people from more privileged backgrounds um, because um, it's hard enough to break in as it is but then once you're in the higher up you get the less people there are that match your uh, experiences for example as you go up the ladder, they're more likely to um, have their children at private school. They're more likely to um, have very wealthy parents. We'll fit in more people from lower social backgrounds leave television earlier because they don't feel like uh, they fit in. I experienced it, I think, quite a lot when I was when I first started work. I worked at RDF, and, and it was very much like a private boys' club, mainly male, mainly people that had been to Eton or Oxford and I remember feeling quite bitter about it at the time. I felt like I I wasn't I didn't have the same chances that they necessarily had. Did it ever discourage you like being around those type of people? Did it discourage me? No. I quite liked being the naughty cheeky one in a way. And I was always always pretty accepted by everyone else. Uh, because it could make them laugh or whatever. Um, so what was your first big ba uh, breakthrough? So obviously you've been a runner. Uh, what was then the step up from that? Um, well, interestingly, I was a runner for just a day. I was very lucky. <laughs> you know, I managed to, um, the, the, I was working on, it was a TV show called Born Sloppy, which was presented by Sarah Cox. It's a very anarchic um, late night Channel 4 show. And the, the previous runner had fallen down the stairs. It was filmed in a, in a pub converted pub and with a really narrow staircase and obviously when you doing a live show or as live as it was running up and down the stairs he fell down so I was very lucky to get my break in that way and at the end of the first uh day I remember someone saying did you enjoy that and I went yeah I can't wait to come back next week and they went well actually he's coming back next week so you didn't have a job so my my day as a runner lasted a day however two days later I got a phone call saying would you like to be a researcher because we're looking for someone to run the audits department. So in a way, I I got a lucky break in that 
I didn't have to be a runner for very long. So I was an audience researcher and, and my reputation as an audience researcher got me another job on a on a on a new show called Terry and Gabby, which was hosted by Terry Wogan and Gabby Roslin and produced by Chris Evans. Yeah. And so my big sort of break came from the fact that I volunteered to do the warm up for for the show. Chris Evans saw the warm up. He thought it was really fun. And he me and him became sort of like a little bit of a double act. And so when that show was decommissioned, he said to me, you're not going anywhere. You're going to come and join our development team because I think you'll be good with ideas. So at that point, I left um, doing poor production, moved into development, which was coming up with my own ideas for shows, which I did uh, with Chris and then consequently at the BBC. Um, the BBC, had, I think they did a something in The Guardian where you could you could send in ideas or something. And then you went to a day where they invited loads of people there. And off the back of that, I got a researcher job at the BBC. I started Bandicoot up with a guy called Derek McLean. And that was five years ago, five, six years ago. And he was like, I'm looking to set up. And I was like, oh my God, so am I. And we were both speaking to the same people. And so we decided to go with a company called Argonon and they set us up. And yeah, within a year, we got our first quiz show on BBC One. And at which point we managed to secure the option to the Masked Singer. And I had obviously clearly done games and tasks um, on Big Brother, on Celebrity and other shows. So the marrying up of the two, a guessing game, which was my wheelhouse, and Derek's sort of running a celebrity panel, they said, you guys, you should see whether you can get it for the UK. And we did manage to get it. And it was, we were very lucky because everyone wanted it, but we somehow managed to get it. And clearly, obviously, Moss Stinger is now one of the biggest shows on telly. And how was it winning an Emmy and being at the Emmys and then going up on stage and getting your award? Thank you to ITV who supported us and the channel who uh, broadcast the show. A huge thanks to Joel Domit, who is our host. A massive thanks to Dan, my co-exec producer on the show. We're so delighted to be here. We can't believe we won. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. And you're right at the back, which normally an award ceremony means you're not going to win. And and then they announced us. And if you've seen this video online, you can see it. Yeah, we, we have absolutely had no, we had nothing prepared. Derek successfully thanked no one apart from me and Joel. <laughs> And so the next day it was we, we, when we woke up and we were all flying because we flew straight back and we were in a lot of trouble because we hadn't thanked anyone that deserved thanking because we were just totally unexpectedly went one.